This is the Man Rights Activist Podcast, episode 156. Three years in the game, baby. Woo-hoo. Yeah, we focus on relationships, sports, pop culture, and politics from a managed point of view. First of all, we want to thank our listeners, our new ones, our OGs. Thank you, thank you, thank you for hanging with the fellas. What up? On today's show, Jackie Chan won't pass his fortune down to his son. Well, obviously he didn't pass on his talent to his son because <laughs> he wouldn't need that fortune. <laughs> oh, man, heads up for not doing a fortune cookie joke, by the way, man. Good job, man. <laughs> Times have changed, brother. Some mm-hmm. m- Simone Biles pulls out of the Olympics. Simone, let me tell you something. Pulling out, never a good thing. I should know. I got two sons. The pull out does not. Work. Just abstain, man. <laughs> uh, man. Dr. Dre ordered to pay, and we have a hated male of the week, Kevin Samuels. We'll talk about all that and more right now. This is MRE Podcast with Kyle and Kamal, where men come to talk and women come to eavesdrop. I am Kyle. I am Kamal. And we're helping you to understand the man you love. Kamal, let's get to the news. Let's Let us. Get, let's get into <laughs> the damn news. Yeah, man. Jeff Bezos went to outer space, Kamal, and stayed for four minutes. Four minutes? Yeah, man. He was conflicted. He said he was happy he made it, but embarrassed to be a four-minute brother. A four-minute brother is not a good thing. <laughs> Never good, man. What was his excuse? He had been drinking. <laughs> it's cold in outer space. He had a lot on his mind. He, yeah, a lot of stressful. Thinking about baseball. He was not thinking about baseball. Not thinking about baseball. He's supposed right. to be thinking about baseball. Right, right, mm-hmm. right. What am I talking about, man? I'm, yeah. <laughs> I haven't been a four minute brother in years. Kyle. Years, man. So yeah, I don't, man. I don't even know. I don't even remember the excuses. <laughs> uh man, use a trip, man. It's been a long time, but yeah, a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of uh, finishing before, <laughs> before your uh, whatever the fuck you should be, yeah, yeah, you something. Be. Fuck it. Speaking of something, speaking of something, yeah. former President Donald Trump said the U.S. women's soccer team lost to Sweden in the Olympics because of wokeism. Mm. Oh God! Yeah, man, he said that is. wokeism makes you lose, ruins your mind, mm. and ruins mm. you as a person. You become mm. warped. You become demented. Mm. Wow. It sounds like Donald Trump has been woke for the past year, Kyle. <laughs> he lucky he stay woke, bro. Yeah, stay woke, making you lose and ruin your yeah. mind. Shit. He definitely demented. He is definitely on that wokeness right now. Yeah, man. Never thought Trump would be woke, Kamal. <laughs> hey, man, speaking of presidents, Kamal, uh, Cuban protesters protested out front of the president of the United States. Uh, in the White House, protests outside of the White House earlier this week just to get the Biden administration to step up and help the Cubans who are allegedly being abused by their own government. Come on. Mm. Yeah, man. The Biden administration said they are prepared to take military action. But first, they need to investigate to see if Cuba has oil. Mm. <laughs> That's the first thing first. See if they they have oil. I know they need oil. All those they definitely need oil. Classic cars. Yeah, yeah. Need some oil changes. Need some but... oil. So I don't know if you know it's worth it. If we gotta bring the oil. Yeah, we, yeah. To the country before yeah, we take it over. We, we trying to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do y'all? Uh, y'all don't have oil. Okay, we're gonna keep. We, we, we'll get back to you. We'll get back to you. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll uh, sort this thing out later. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna look into it some more. Yo, speaking of presidents. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> or former president. Mm-hmm. Yo, man, you heard about this assassination Bro, in gangster. Haiti? Yeah, man. Wow, it's crazy, dude. So after the assassination of Haitian President Jovenel Moise mm-hmm. a couple of weeks ago, yeah. thor- authorities have arrested the president's security coordinator. Oh. Yeah, his mm. security coordinator was arrested. Now, Kyle, I don't know if he had anything to do with the president's assassination. True. It's safe to say that it's probably time for a career change. Oh, definitely. You can get if another your job. Your job is to coordinate security. <laughs> for a president that was assassinated. Yeah, that's not something look you want to put on your resume. Nah, 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 you nah, nah, you leave that out on your monster. Nah, yeah. Yeah, I was the special teams coordinator for the <laughs> Buffalo Bills in '92. Yeah. You know, I was. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I was. Yeah, you don't say any of that shit. You know? uh, yeah, you don't mention that part, right? No, sir. Hey, man, uh, what else you got? Speaking of, <laughs> with the last thing, I black men. Uh, I guess, okay. Oh yeah, from African president. descent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Your boy R. Kelly, Kyle. That oh man just God, cannot catch a break. He's tripping. But now it looks like he's about to catch another case. Mm. Yeah, man. Kale's faces new allegations of mm. bribery and sexually abusing a teenage boy. <sighs> leading us to go back and analyze the true meaning of trapped in the closet. Ah, uh, now it all makes sense, it come makes on. makes sense, yeah, it man. It makes sense, man. But hey, you got to look at the bright side, man. The good news is he has moved up to 17-year-olds. That's, That's progress. Great. That's progress. That's come on. You got to make progress. And yeah, he's man. almost you, uh, federally, he's almost was, 18, which is the federal yes, uh, statute, what is yes. it called, uh, age of consent. Yes, we just so got almost legal across all 50 states. We're almost to 18, Kamal. It's getting better. Yeah, it's getting In better. some ways, it's getting better, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, R. Kelly, when your mind is telling you no, just listen, please. Just listen. That's all you got to do. Listen. Yeah, listen, man. Don't listen. listen to your body, dog. Do not listen yeah. to your body. <laughs> Don't listen to wrestle no. with the love muscle. Yeah, no. Listen to your mind, bro. <laughs> hey, check it out, man. Speaking of Houston, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Has nothing to do. I need to stop these horrible segues. Sexual assault, maybe? There you go. Speaking of sexual assault, man, the Houston Texans are finally ready to trade Deshaun Watson, Kamal. Hmm. Yeah, they said they're going to throw in a first rounder, a second rounder, and in case he goes to jail, 10 box of cigarettes. 10 box. 10 box. Let me get 10 Uh, box. Man, man, that, that is necessary because... You know that currency in, in prison, Mandy. That's 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 that that's that real money right there. That's that real money. <laughs> Let me get ten bucks. Every ten bucks. Yo, oh, speaking man. of jail. Oh, okay. Speaking of jail. Yeah, speaking mm-hmm. of jail. A Kroger grocery store employee in College Station, Texas, was arrested for allegedly stealing one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in cash. Mm, really. Yeah, man. The company said they became suspicious when the employee was able to afford to buy groceries at Whole Foods. Oh, what are you doing over there on your Kroger salary? Yeah, no, man. <laughs> we like, don't hey, pay you enough for Whole Foods, We don't dog. pay you enough for that shit. The hell are you doing over there, man? We need to look into this shit. $30 for some cherries? Oh, oh no, man. no, This no, motherfucker no. flossing them, too. Just throwing yeah. them in the air, catching them in his mouth. Just like Dropping them, they tripping. Yeah, nigga, that was thirty dollar cherries, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you just tossing them in the air, walking by when you drop them. Yeah. You're not even in- implementing the five second rule. We know yeah. something going on here. Offering bro. them to the other motherfuckers. I mean, <laughs> you sharing the thirty dollar cherries? <laughs> That's how we do it. Yo, check his bank account. Hold up, we sharing in the two one? Hold <laughs> up, hold the fuck up. Check check the security tape. Yeah, man, this nigga must be up to something, man. Hey, man, <laughs> hey, speaking of up to something, congratulations to LeVar Burton. He is now the first show. Wait, speaking of up to something. Up to something. He's up to something. He's up to a new oh, job. Okay, okay, yeah. He's yeah, up yeah, to yeah, yeah. good. Jeopardy's He's up to something. Su- yeah, not negative, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeopardy super fan LeVar Burton is now the show host. Come on. How cool is that, right? That is Ultra cool. Yeah, now I'm wondering if the master had just said Kunta when LeVar had said, what is my name? Mm. Ah, yeah, could have got through all that ass whooping, come on. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> ask it in the form of a question, master. Okay, kept his foot and all that shit. could have kept his foot if he just, uh, you got to oh, ask it correctly. That's all he had to do. All he had to man. do. I man. like LeVar Burton, man. Nah, good dude, man. Loves dude, reading. Man. Loves reading. Got me, uh, he didn't get me really interested in the reading, mm-hmm. but, you know, I like this show. Oh, yeah, the Reading Rainbow shout Yeah, out. I like this show, man. I like the Reading yeah. Rainbow. And he still time. reads, like, to kids online and stuff. My, my, he was reading to my daughter online. For real? Yeah, bro. Like, he, you know, he'll, you can, some, she likes to read books. She likes to follow, like, when celebrities read a book out loud. Mm-hmm. And he's one of them that does it a lot. Oh, okay, I thought it was like on some like that cameo nah, nah. website. Like you pay him, and he'll be like oh, read nah, to your bro, daughter that's... and all that shit. I can't. Like, nah. Speaking, of, come on. We just talked about R. Kelly, man. I ain't have no damn celebrity reading my daughter. <laughs> I just bro. thought times was tough for the man. Yeah, you need nah. The nah. <laughs> he got. He got, he got a only fans for <laughs> reading. Request, nigga. <laughs> I will read to your daughter for thirty nine ninety nine. Thirty nine ninety nine. I will Hilarious. read some shit. Yo, finally, Kyle. Yes. In an effort to promote their new chicken nuggets, mm-hmm. Popeyes has pledged to buy the cash equivalent of one million nuggets from Chick Fil A, mm-hmm. McDonald's, mm-hmm. Burger King, and mm-hmm. Wendy's, mm-hmm. and will donate them to Second Harvest Food Bank of Greater New Orleans. Kyle. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, all man. Right, all right. I yeah, see. It. I exactly. see. Exactly. This yeah. is going to be a great year, said Diabetes. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey man, speaking of losing feet. <laughs> Diabetes is by the one million nuggets. Don't oh, it's going down, bro. Ooh-wee. Hey man, we come back, we got some feedback, and then we have a post nut from a woman who crossed the line but regrets it for a strange reason. We'll explain. It's the MRA podcast. <laughs> Hey, what's up, guys? I sure hope you're enjoying the show. If you like it, I invite you to go to our website, themrapodcast.com, and catch up on over 100 episodes that we have in store for you. You ain't working. You might as well check us out. And if you want some more, go over to The World According to Cheryl and check me out on Cheryl Underwood's podcast. We post content there every single day. We have her normal radio show labeled SUR, and then the Cheryl Underwood podcast where we get into her personal business every Friday. Then on the weekends, we have the special these shows and range from late night cupcake to auntie shows house party to our gospel show spiritual nourishment you gotta check out the world according to Cheryl even though I ain't on it <laughs> we got some feedback homie do we now yes we do man my sister said that woman groping you was not cool thank you for reminding me about that you know I was already I just had forgotten Kamal uh. The groping, I, that word is so violent. You know, I can't blame my sister. She's, she's just being loving. Let me not be that person. Yeah, so thank you for your concern. Is fondle a better word? <laughs> fondle's a funny word to be. Fondle. <laughs> it's a funny word, man. Yeah, it's man, just weird. She fondled my nuts. Yeah, hey, I don't even like, think people would take you serious. You went in and reported it. Yeah. I was yeah, fondled. <laughs> yeah, you can fondle yourself, by the way. You can't grope yourself, but yeah, you can fondle grope, yourself. Yeah, grope is uh, some serious shit. It's you know, fondle yeah, is like, they, they, they yeah. might giggle at you. They might, they gonna giggle, man. <laughs> uh, they gonna g- giggle and grope if you're a man. But anyway, she said, wow, I'm sure eye-opening and you're right. The reversal could have got you sued, fired, arrested, man, canceled. The whole nine yards, man. So, yeah, my sister is right on time for that. When we come back, we have a post nut from a woman who crossed the line but regrets it for a strange reason we'll explain next it's the mri podcast according to webster's dictionary being in post nut mode is when you have a clear mind and you can make sound decisions as if you just busted a nut yeah i don't know if webster actually said that no he didn't but our listener big easy q told us all about it and we can relate women men so listen if you have a story when you did something foolish in pre-nut mode yeah something really dumb maybe it was top grime especially something in pre-nut mode you don't want nobody to know about hit us up and we'll tell the world we can all laugh at your expense and hopefully you'll learn from your mistakes aristotle once said the results of pre-nut mode is the best teacher i think he said some shit like that send us your stories at dear irby at the mra podcast.com that's dear irby at the mra podcast.com and now it's time for a post-nut mode story only on the MRA podcast. Okay, this one is from Carrie in Michigan. She says, I went on vacation with my boyfriend, his brother, and his brother's wife. One night we were all drinking in our cabin, but my brother in law's wife was being a spoiled brat as usual. So she went to bed early. My boyfriend is a lightweight and he passed out. I was the last one standing with my boyfriend's brother, and the next thing we know, we were making out. Oof. Come on, come out. Mm. Uh, I, to edit, I had sex with my boyfriend's brother that night. And worst of all, I regret it because I loved it. Now my boyfriend and I are married and I have to see his annoying wife all the time. I have to live with the fact that this woman I hate is getting screwed properly. And meanwhile, I go to bed every night horny and unsatisfied. It's the worst. That's Carrie and Michigan come out. Wow. Yeah, man, that's weird. Well, here's the thing, Kyle. She doesn't feel bad because, you know, it's wrong to, like, mm-hmm. you know, have, have had sex with her, her, her husband's brother. Mm-hmm. It's the fact that she hates his wife so much. <laughs> and she sampled the merchandise, and she's basically yes. just jelly that the yes. wife yes. is, like, getting, like, the good pipe. Yeah, dude, that's... That's insane to me, man. All right. Like, you, like, can't you like look you at that got... at Thanksgiving? Look at that bitch getting all that good dick. Look at her. Nice <laughs> and flush. <laughs> yeah, look at her smile. Look at her unstressed. I got How dare you? A Puerto Rican <laughs> dildo I bought. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? She is really just. Yeah. Like, uh, I get the regret. It's mm. regret for the wrong thing. Yeah. But yeah. can we can we can we talk about this little elephant in the room, man? 
Carrie seemed cooler than the wife that's getting dicked down well. You know what I mean? Like, the wife is being described as a snatch. I wonder if Carrie would be described as a bad person. Because Carrie's fun. She doing her thing. Meanwhile, the, why are you angry, wife? You get, It's like you don't even appreciate the good wood you get. <laughs> she's spoiled. <laughs> yeah, so, of she's course, she's, she's I mean, he's got to hit that right because she's spoiled. That's what she expects. Yeah, man, that's funny, man. Oh, my God. Man, we come back. There's a petition to remove relationship guru Kevin Samuels from social media. We'll tell you what we think about next. It's the MRA Podcast. Hey, guys, if you're digging the show, then please tell somebody. People might say something to you like, hey, man, you know what podcast you listening to? And that's when you say the MRA Podcast with Kyle and Kamal. Or the MRA Podcast with Kamal and Kyle. Kamal, we have a hated mail of the week. I haven't had this in a long time. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, today's hated mail of the week is Kevin Samuel. Kevin Samuels, man, the relationship guy on social media who rates some of women on his show and who asks for advice. We we talked about this guy before. Women call in and they say, "Hey, I have this this problem. I want a six figure nigga." Blah blah blah. And he's like, "Hold up, let's start with you. How 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 tall are you?" How much you weigh? How many kids you got? And then by the by the end of the ranking system, he lets them know that their expectations are way too high. Now, so, yeah, yeah. Now, th- there's so many ways we can go to this cabal. First of all, I'm going to say that uh, Kevin Samuels, I've listened to him extensively. Is he the reason why I am where I am? No. And that's what some of the complaints are. They're, they're, he's poisoning the mind of men. No, he's not. If you if if you can listen to him, you're already a certain type of man. All right. And believe it or not, I can't listen to him like I used to. I haven't listened to him a long time because I've started to see a pattern where he seems like he just wants to to light him up. That's that's for me. Who's listened to a lot of his episodes. I started seeing a pattern of like they can't win. And I can't stand it when you know what I mean when it's almost like somebody's just trying to jam you up. Well, yeah, and it's like the it's basically rigged. It's like you can't. Yeah, you know, it's like a carnival yes. carnival game. It's like yes. wait a second, he shouldn't even yes. fit. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's like I'm just like, are you trying to help them or are you just entertaining us by lighting them up? And that's when I started to realize, you know, sometimes as INS members, we say that's fake or that's rigged or that's why I'm up and be like, oh yeah, that's why he's so successful. He knows how he knows his entertainment value. He knows what to do, what the people tune in for. And so he gives them. It's like Apollo without the booze. You got they're going to put some bad acts in there because people want to watch Showtime at the Apollo. They expect to see somebody get booed. Mm -hmm. And so I started to notice that while he is dropping gems, it does seem to he he does at least appear to get his rocks off from lighting them up so that that made me kind of energetically i was like yeah i'm 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 a backup i'm a backup for a while uh it wasn't vibing with me but i will say this man sometimes it seems like people would rather cancel you than listen to harsh realities some of that shit he says is mean and is foul and i get that but Man, they get. I, I've seen him get mad when he isn't even being disrespectful. He's just telling them what to expect. It's like, look, if you look like this, and and the problem is, a lot of the women on there they value their job as if that makes them a ten, and they can't seem to fathom that to a high value man, as Kevin Samuels calls them, that you making a lot of money, lady, does not inspire a high value man do you can you understand what he's coming from on that come out i do and i can understand where um uh, his critics are coming from as well uh, Facts. i'm not i'm not a fan of canceling unless there is a you know a a, a threat of physical danger like if somebody mm. is like rallying the troops to do some you know harm to people Mm-hmm. You know, if you if you're just talking, giving you know, giving your opinion, yeah, I don't have to listen to that shit. Your opinion might be you know warped and whatever like that. Mm-hmm. And it's like I just you know I, I can't fuck with you. But, uh, but and so I I don't I don't agree that he should be canceled. But I understand the criticism. I've listened to Kevin Samuels, uh, and I me personally I couldn't after I think the fourth or fifth one. I was like, wait a second, this is the same old shit. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You like, oh, this is this is this is an act almost. Right. Um and what he's saying, uh is breaking everything down to a superficial element. Mm-hmm. 
you know, men are only attracted in looks and, and, and all of that stuff. And if you don't look a certain way, you won't be able to get this guy. And that's not always reality. He's looking no. at it from a straight, uh, definitely uh, a negative or pessimistic, but definitely a, uh, also a black and white point of view. And there is some gray area to it. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, he's taken away, I'm not going to say inner beauty and all that shit, but personality mm-hmm. uh, matches, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. interests, likes, mm-hmm. and all. He's taking that shit all the way. He's getting rid of all of that and just basically yeah. saying. But no, he he says, I figure what he says. I got to find out what he says. But he does say, like, men like women that are fit, friendly. He has, like, a list. Mm-hmm. And it's like submissive, and I'm like, yeah, check, check, <laughs> yeah. agreeable. Like, yeah. That's what I mean when he says shit like that. I'm like, yeah, fit, yeah, friendly, yeah, agreeable, yeah, agreeable, yeah, submissive, yeah. It's like, see, I don't, I don't that. know. I mean, I don't know if anybody. I guess there's some guys out there, obviously, but who wants a pure, uh, just submissive mate? Mm. I mean, what is the that's not a mate. Like you guys don't grow. You pretty much will be the same person who would own slaves. Mm, you know, I think wow. I think we as human beings, man, I think I think it's natural to want mm-hmm. some some pushback. Mm-hmm. You know, that's like Donald Trump doesn't want any pushback. You know, if mm-hmm. you don't agree with him, he'll fire you or he'll shit on yeah, you. But yeah, he yeah, basically yeah, yeah. wants all praise and wants all people to you know everybody to yeah. say. He's a genius and all of that yeah, shit. Even yeah, when he's yeah. now, he made the right decision. Even when he fucks yeah, up, yeah, yeah. I need you to prove that I did. Sycophant, right? Mm-hmm. And so we, a lot of far. people, say like that motherfucker's not well. Yeah, he's not well. No, and he's so not well. if somebody who wants somebody just submissive, mm-hmm. it's like I, I don't know, man. Like I, I well, just, I think, I think uh, argument, not like yelling at each other, throwing shit mm-hmm. at each other. But I think argument is healthy. You know, somebody no, that get you don't think it's healthy. Somebody, <laughs> I've heard that before from people that like to argue. I don't like to but, argue, but it's like sometimes, man, it, it, for, for for me to think that I'm always right and there's only one perspective and my point of view is always the correct point of view, I think is... No, uh, that's not submissive, though. That's not well, submissive, though. Well, I'm saying a submissive person is like, hey, it's my way all the time. Do what I say. Uh, I don't want to hear any back talk. Yeah. I don't want to hear any pushback. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, if I don't want any pushback, that means I, I'm I'm assuming my way is the right way. It's like dealing with your children. I don't want to hear about any pushback or any arguments because I'm the father, I'm mm-hmm. the parent, and what I say mm-hmm. goes, and I'm right in this yeah. regard. I get away well. I get along well with my kids though, a lot more well. <laughs> but do you, but you don't you uh, do you you don't do the. Uh, my way or the highway. You, no, your kids no, I think are... that's weak. I think that's weak. Here's the thing. I don't. I. I. I am a big fan of submission, but I'm not a big fan of a sycophant who's just no opinion. So I like. Explain I the have difference. What, I, well, I'm, all right. I have what I call my cabinet. Right. If I got a situation, I'm calling Kamal. I'm calling my mom. Uh, it, 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 you know, maybe one or two other people, but definitely those two, right? And I'm and I'm gonna see because I know you're not gonna BS me. I know my mom's. I'm, I'll call my cousin Anthony. You know what I mean? Like I just get some perspective. People that'll be like, "Bruh, let me tell you, the, let me tell you what I see," and I and and I'll hear that. But from a mate, I don't, I don't always want to be talked to like I'm their sub subordinate. And normally, when people claim equality. It's not really equality. One person. Go ahead. I was gonna say those. Well, those are two different things. Yeah. And so that is that's the pendulum in the other direction, right? That's that's yeah, 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 yeah That's yeah. saying, hey, instead of instead of you giving me some feedback, you're telling me what to do, and I'm not saying yeah. that. And so yeah, and, and I think that is a problem for a lot of people. We mm. we take it as you know somebody's telling me what to do. I don't like I don't like that shit personally. Yeah. And so to fix that or to to remedy that, I'll just get somebody who don't say shit. No, you know? and that's not what I'm saying. I'm so not like, saying you. Like, I'm just saying like in general. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would but be I want to like be the, the boss. I do want to be the boss, right? I want to mm-hmm. be the boss, but I want to be the cool boss, like with my kids, right? Like when I say goes, but 
there, there's got to be all due respect. So in my relationship, I definitely want to have the all due respect and I got to earn that. But I want to have the all due respect. Absolutely. I want that. But when it, it's not that I don't want pushback, I do want healthy honesty. I just don't want to be her. And to what it ends up being is one of us is going to end up getting the final say. And it ends up normally being the woman because she's more willing to uh, be the squeaky wheel. And guys, guys just want to. Oh, yeah. The guys just want to be cool. Oh, yeah. So that's how women end up. Even if they don't they don't run the show at first, eventually she will because she will use her powers and we won't oh, yeah. use ours. They have many hills they would die on. Oh, yeah. They, all of Small them. Small hills. yeah, Small hills, big hills, <laughs> and they call all their fouls. So we don't call our fouls, and then they just keep calling theirs, and then we just, because we want to please them. But the other, but I want to go back to this petition for a second, man, because what I didn't like about it was it felt like a little bit of a reach. You know, because you talked about, you know, physical violence and stuff like that. And, you know, and that's when somebody should be canceled. And in, according to position, the petition, they say, with the rise of violence against women, specifically African-American women, YouTuber Kevin Samuels has galvanized the community of men of all races and nationalities and outspoken hatred of women. That kind of shit, it grates against me because well, it's such a fucking reach. Go ahead. That is a Carl Lewis level <laughs> long jump leap. Dude, it you know drives me nuts. When I, I hear said, it on Fox News, it drives me nuts. I used to do that to Obama all the time. Drives me nuts. Yeah, like, that's, a, that's a major leap. That's a, that's a hell of a reach. That's CNN you know, does it. Fox plus News two does it. Equals yeah. four hundred. Be- well, Eventually, it, it will. I'm going to tell you it why. Could, and it's just like, what the fuck? So, dude, we we I think we can agree that Kevin Samuels goes in hard against women, and you can make the connection that hatred to women can lead to violence against women but to me that it it hasn't become that because honestly remember we you know we tried to we got trump kicked off of social media i said we we didn't do that shit trump was kicked off of social media because the the, the masses didn't like his messaging and this feels like the same type of deal where it's like we don't like his messaging so we're gonna make it seem like where it's like trump actually incited a riot well, that's Something what it was it happened. wasn't just they they didn't like his messaging for years it's just but that once this something one, happened this one this one they could actually link to what he said they, they can link it they can link it to violence kevin samuel yes. if 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 cats is wearing kevin samuel shirts and beating up women yes and then he's not you know yes then, then there there you go you solved it right there if it and we don't want it to get to that so one no. argument could say that but uh, yeah, the change dot org petition is at about seventeen thousand signatures out of twenty five thousand, which is what they want. I'm not sure what they expect to get from those twenty five thousand s- signatures, but for context, Kevin Samuels has over one million YouTube subscribers. So let's see how that works out for them when we come back. And 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 you nailed on the head, man. But when we come back, how do we feel about Simone Biles checking out of the Olympics? We'll talk about it, and later in the show, we'll tell you why Jackie Chan is not giving his fortune to his son. It's the MRA podcast. <laughs> Hey guys and gals, if you're enjoying the show, let someone know. Whatever app you're listening on, please subscribe, give us five stars, and leave a positive comment. And why wouldn't you give us five stars and a positive comment? We're great. Yes, we are. This helps our placement so that other people can enjoy the show as well. And why wouldn't they? We're great. Kamal, to me, the great, we, I'm just talking to my son about this, man. One of the greatest female athletes that I've ever seen is Simone Biles. She mm-hmm. might be the greatest. And I was telling my youngest son, uh, the pup, about how if she just did a different sport, she'd be set for life. Just be, no, no, no shade to gymnastics, but with her athletic ability, if she was playing tennis, oh my Lord, she'd be so paid because she's such a super athlete. But she has withdrawn from the Olympics, speaking of tennis, just like Naomi Osaka. And she is saying it is for her mental health. She said, um, after the performance that I did, I didn't want to go into the other event. So I thought I would take a step back. Mm. Yeah. Mm. How you feel about it, bro? Uh, listen, man, and maybe I'm being a bit harsh here, uh-huh. but I don't like it, Kyle. Oh, I hate it. I don't like it. Let me I ain't explain. Leave you out there. I let, hate it. Yeah, let me explain why, man. And, and, and before you like cuss me out, not you personally, but the listeners. Yeah, the listeners. Hear me yeah. out. Um, I I have to say this is a product of of social media. Why? Well, because man, here's the thing. 
these athletes have these big profiles. They have all these followers and all that stuff, and and their fans can instantly contact them and or, and, and, and send messages, and you can start mm-hmm. trending your name and all of that. So when you have these big profiles, that's the pressure, and now you don't want to fuck up. And so that's when you start needing these mental health days and all that stuff. Uh, Osaka, like you said, remember in the playoffs, um, the guy that's dating one of the Kardashians or the Jenners, uh, mm-hmm. Ben Trish. Simmons was no Ben oh, Simmons ben, okay. was scared to shoot. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like that that they don't have the shit that Michael Jordan had because Michael Jordan wasn't gonna have a million people on Twitter after he missed a shot or he didn't. Or he made a shot, like attacking him or memes about him and all of that shit. It was a different time. So I think that you could just focus on the competition back in the day. Whereas now, a lot of our athletes have brands and shit like that that they have to like be mindful of. And so when when Simone does something and she stumbles, she's like, oh shit, I'm going to be a meme. Oh fuck, I'm going to have to see this shit now. Me, boop. Stumbling, but she a meme. She's a meme now, anyway. A negative meme. I'm yes. saying. Well, I'm saying at the time, and so now it's just easy just to say, you know what? I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna sit this one out, Coach. Come out. I, I don't I don't need the I don't need the scrutiny. You know, I don't need it. Let me tell you why I'm not buying this shit, man. Why? First of all, you said that Jordan didn't have social media pressure. Sure, but Steph Curry does, and he is clutch on clutch on clutch. Let me tell you what I see with this thing. Hold Let me on, tell you why. Hold on. I was Go ahead. This. Go ahead. Steph Curry's in his thirties. He's yeah, older. You know, hilarious. He's, All right. I mean, well, how he, how old is Giannis then? Uh, he's on. Like yeah, he's 27? in his twenty-seven. Yeah. So I don't know. What I'm saying I don't man, know if he. I don't, I don't. I don't. I don't know if he has a big social media presence. I'm talking about these people have huge social media presence. I watched Simone Biles uh, doing handstands and taking off her her clothes with her feet and stuff like that. I yeah, watched. She's amazing. I watch uh, Naomi Osaka posing with her boyfriend in bikinis, and I, I've watched the things that they put out. I haven't seen Giannis putting mm-hmm. shit out like that. So yeah. I'm not saying like it's the age of social media. But they're definitely I'm saying bigger. when you have your own presence in your own social media platform and, and you're putting that stuff out there, that's my Let point. Let me tell you why I hate it, man. I hate that both these sisters are both black women. Mm-hmm. And even though you could say it's a positive thing, I don't like the perception of us ever looking dumb or weak as black people. I'm not saying they look dumb, but I don't like us ever looking. Those are the two that always drives me crazy. I don't want us to look weak. I don't want us to look dumb. So I'm not saying she's weak because she needs a mental health day. And here's the good thing about what she's done, Kamal. I read that the reason why we have paid vacation is because of women in the workplace. Guys will just walk it off. I have been working so much, Kamal, that I just need a mental health day. But you know what? I'm not taking one. I'll ask for a day off. I ain't doing that. I'll wait till I have an organic day off and I'll try to catch up. I'll catch up on the off days. And I and I need to schedule some days off. But but I uh 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 I I won't. And I can feel it too when I'm like, ooh, ooh, I'm not recovering as fast. I need some, I need a mental health. And so what I try to do is, you know, sleep longer, stay in the bed longer, rest. But I do need some days. But my point I'm making is, come out. It is. It felt like she didn't want to have. It felt like she didn't want to come a second, so she just backed out, right, come out. Yeah, she didn't want the L. Yeah, she didn't want the L. Let me tell you how I can relate to this. So you know, I'm a doorman at the comedy store, right? Yes, sir. And on a Monday night, uh, they were doing a show. It, was, it wasn't a comedy store show, but it was still a show. And the show, somehow, they, they messed up the timing of it. And so it was like there was comics. Th- the show got done too early, and the waitresses had not dropped the tabs yet. So somehow that happened, right? Miscommunication. A couple of people didn't show up. So they're, they're literally, like, calling all cars and saying, the comics can go up. Now, all my life, come on, ever since I started doing comedy, I always, there's like an ego thing where like, you have to take it. If they want, you, if they let you on, you go on, whether you want to go on or not, right? There's always that thing, okay? Mm-hmm. I'm sitting up there and they, they start throwing people on and there's like, 
It was so bad, man, they threw two comics up twice. Somebody who had already been on the show, they threw him up twice. They asked me into a doorman and a security guard, right? I went backstage and I was about to ask and the doorman and security guard was there too. And I was like, I don't want to go up there because the show was over. They had ended the show and then they went back and say, hold on guys. I know you're, some of you guys haven't paid your tab yet. So we're going to just, we're going to throw some doorman up. And I was like, it hit in my mind. It had become an open mic. So I was like, nah, dog. And they were like, are you, you don't want to go? I was like, nah, I'm cool. I'm and Cabal, what I tell you, it was, it didn't look fun. <laughs> it did not look fun. But afterwards I was, I was like, that's weird, man. I've never turned down an opportunity to go up. I've seen celebrity comedians do that. Like they'll be at the laugh factory hanging out and they'll be like, nah, I'm good. You want to go on? Nah, I'm just hanging. And that was the first time I was able to say, nah, I'm good. Now I felt good about it, but. I did not feel prepared enough to go up there and meet the quality of what I what I could do. I wasn't trying to just go up there and, and throw some shit together and, and have a decent set. I I have a standard. I have a, of a way I prepare. And if it had been a comedy store show and, you know, somebody had been missing and they needed somebody right right now, I would have stepped up. But like the show's over. Now we're throwing guys on the stretch. And I didn't I didn't want to do that. That's so little, tell me. That's a little different. For her, this they were calling this the Biles Olympics. She's part of the mm. Olympic promos. Yeah. You know, she's got a, a ton of endorsements. But uh, doesn't that mean she has to do it since it's the Biles Olympics? Right. Right. And and and, and, and so now though, if she's not at her best and she's yeah. like, I just, I'm just not that sharp, uh-huh. if I go out there and everyone's expecting me to to kill, yeah, and I'm gonna give a, a decent performance. I, I'm gonna sit this one out, man, because of all the pressure. I could just, yeah. you know, and, and, and I'm not saying she could, she's making that the mental health thing. I think it's no, really, it is. I stressful. think it's really is Shit. fucking with her. It's you know? man, it's a bitch. Yeah, I think, it, but it's part of the game. It's a part of the game. It's what you signed up for. It's the reason why. I can't imagine Carl Lewis doing that shit. Well, I just can't because that, that is that or Flojo. Well, see, it's different. Those are straight up and down like competitions. Mano y mano, Wamani. Oh, uh, yeah, you're going to judging. Y Wamano. I don't know how to do yeah, the yeah, women yeah. shit for Flojo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's straight up and down competition. So you could just lose. Carl Lewis has lost. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He you're running and he could just lose. I, I, you know, mm-hmm. and you come up lame or some shit like that with the hamstring or some yeah, bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But this one is like, man, this is all you, baby. The whole yeah. world is watching you, and then you. Have I wish to be she would have stepped up to the occasion, man, and I hope she steps up next time. Well, I think uh, they, they say uh, they asked her if she's gonna. She's got the individuals Thursday. Is she gonna compete in that one? But I don't think so, Kyle. Uh, man, you know, I don't want to hear that shit. Cause I'm not ready for it. I ain't hey, ready man, for that shit. We still waiting for detox from Dre, and it's like Dre's <laughs> like, I just don't know if it'll be as good as 2001. And, and it's chronic. not, so don't do it, Dre. <laughs> but I don't think this is the same. <laughs> and I could be a sexist and biased right now, so Say I need y'all to let me know. <laughs> don't do it, Dre. Biased? Do Biles, not do it. Get your just, ass out there. <laughs> like what, hey, listen, Biles, listen. <laughs> it's not the same to me, man. Don't do it, Dre. Don't fuck up your legacy. Hey, Biles, get your ass out there. You got five minutes. <laughs> We come back. Jackie Chad does not try to pass down his fortune to his son. I'll be cool with that. We'll talk about it next to the MRA podcast. You listen to us, but Kamal and I want you to know that we listen to you too. Even if we don't always respond to your tweets in a timely manner. I love how you say we, man. <laughs> so if you have some feedback, maybe you agree. Maybe you disagree. Or maybe you just want to tell us how much you love the show or that you want to testify about how we specifically helped you out. Or maybe you just want to tell Kamal how he was right or wrong. But mostly right. Whatever you want to tell us, hit us on our social. I'm at Kyle Irby. I'm at Angry Kamal. Hit us up and you just might hear your comment on the air. I promise. We'll be gentle. Man, you sent me this, Kamal. This is ridiculous. Jackie Chan still ranking in the big bucks, according to Forbes. He made forty million in twenty nineteen and two twenty, and between twenty nineteen and twenty, man, still making that kind of money. A decade ago, this brother had like the. Uh, he said he would donate all of his three hundred fifty million dollar net worth to charity and not pass it on to his son, JC. That's his name, J-A-Y-C-E, which probably comes from J.C. Jackie Chan. If he is capable, he can make his own money, said Chan. 
If he is not, then he will just be wasting my money. I love that. Come out. <laughs> <laughs> How you feel about it? Well, I, f- I mean, here's the thing about it. We do shit mm-hmm. to pass on to our kids, right? Mm-hmm. But if your kid's a fuck up, if your mm-hmm. kids had every opportunity that you didn't mm-hmm. have to succeed, mm-hmm. and you realize, man, this guy's going to fuck my shit up. Mm-hmm. What is the purpose of me giving him four hundred million dollars if he is gonna squander it on drugs and chicks and bad investments because mm-hmm. he's not gonna do the work to actually, you yeah. know, uh, to do his research on? Mm-hmm. I'm not leaving that shit. It'd be better suited if I give it to charity. Yeah, they'll do better with it than than me just giving this shit to. You know Donald Trump because he's trying to raise money for his reelection. He gonna she gonna eat that money. But that I'll money say, ain't going to a good place. No, but see, I'll say it's a little unfair of Jackie Chan to to compare himself because he's he's the reason why JC yeah. is like that. Yeah, yeah. And Jackie, and, 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 and I was gonna say and Jackie Chan's parents is the reason why Jackie's like that. Like Jackie Chan said he was like part of some circus or whatever. So he was like three. Like his family sent mm-hmm. them off, and so it's like Jackie Chan was raised differently. It was a more cutthroat environment. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? He had to perform or there were some consequences. He had to be mm-hmm. perfect just to probably mm-hmm. ca- catch a meal. So his mm-hmm. upbringing is different. And so when he has a son, Jackie Chan is already an international millionaire superstar. Yeah. So mm-hmm. his son ain't doing that circus shit. His son's in the best schools. And, you know, his son doesn't have to fight coddled. for shit. Coddled. Right. Coddled. Coddled. So, Jackie Chan went. Go ahead. So can you get mad at JC because you're the reason why he's been coddled all these years? Of course you can get mad at him if you want to <laughs> point the finger. If you would love to point the finger, which is what most people do before they look at themselves, they look at the other person. And and that's what Jackie Chan is probably doing. I don't know if he is doing that. But one thing I did like that he owned, he said he once it once was reported that um, he regretted not insisting that his son enroll in the army when he was younger to temper his character. You damn right. You should have raised this boy differently. You spoiled him. Come on. One thing I'm lucky about the success has eluded me for so long. And I'm talking about the major success because, you know, we're doing all right. But I'm talking about that big, big, big time success that I've been working for. I'm so glad that my boys and, and I, I know it's different with the boys and the girls. I'm going to say it. I'm glad that my boys did not grow up with a rich father because it, it made them tougher. Now, my baby girls, I want them to be tough in a different way. And I want them to be logical and all that stuff. But they can fall back on daddy. Yes, that's part of the sexist problem that we have in this culture, culture, but I'm guilty of it as well. My girls can fall back on daddy. My boys, hell no. Nah. No, nah, y'all y'all go out there and be men and be strong. Right. And and the thing about it is I try uh not to solve my kids' problems. Facts. You know, you know, like Phil Jackson used to say, Hey, they'll figure it out. Like take them mm-hmm. out the game, uh, let them let them work well, the shit out. out. Yeah, let, let them work the shit on the court. You know, yep. I'm a big proponent of, you know, raising le- men, right? Letting them figure this shit out until it's time for pops to step in or pops time to out. give that wisdom. Yeah, but you're not going in the game. You're calling a timeout. You're doing. You're whistling with two fingers and calling a timeout. Go ahead. Yeah, my my first my first action is to like, oh, okay, for real. All right, we'll hear it out. All right, what, what, what's, what's the game plan? Okay, cool. Let me know yeah. how that works out. Exactly, and you that's know. why you are a great father. Come on, we right. come back. Dr. Dre, soon to be ex wife, wanted $2 million a month. How much did she get? We'll talk about it next. It's the MRA podcast. Guys, I have a comedy album. It's called Be a Man at All Times, and it's on what's it on? Oh, Spotify, iTunes, or wherever you stream your content. It's a damn good comedy album. I appreciate that, man. There's stand up on there. Kamal and I wrote a Who Done It mystery called The Case of the Missing Balls. That's on there. Based on the true story. Check out the album, show your boys some support, and you can buy it on iTunes. Keyword, buy it. Stop streaming. My sister sent me this, man. I got some news for you, Kamal. Dr. Dre soon to be ex-wife, wanted $2 million a month, but he was ordered to pay her $300,000 a month, which adds up to more than $3.5 million a year indefinitely until she decides to marry somebody else or further order of the court. All right. Kamal, did Dr. Dre win or lose in this whole thing? Well, depends. Mm-hmm. I think based off 
her two million dollar uh, request, um, uh, yeah. he's winning. But if the yeah. goal was always just to ask for some high shit, knowing I wasn't gonna get the two million dollars, that mm. I would get somewhere around three hundred thousand. He lost. Yeah. Mm. You know, so it just depends on on Nicole's intentions. Mm-hmm. She, if she thought she was legitimately getting two million dollars a month, yeah, yeah, Dre's winning this one. But if and she plus, was, if she was like, right. I could I could live off of two hundred thousand dollars a month, the lawyer's like, Nah, fuck that. We are gonna say two million, mm-hmm. and anything he settles with is gonna be cool for us. This is how we know, fellas, if you won or you lost. How angry is your ex wife? That's what we need to know. <laughs> <laughs> Is she cool? Does she feel like she won? Is she happy? Or is she boiling right now? Did she she... sign it fast? (laughs) Did she bang her fist and run out and cry? Uh, You had to hold in your smile. Because if he did, shouts out to uh, Dr. Dre, man. Because that, you know, for y'all that don't know, he allegedly ripped up the prenup, but she thought the prenup was over. But in reality, he only ripped up a copy, and that prenup still stood, and that is how he got this deal. We come back. I thought Kamal was going on vacation, but man, that Delta, not Sigma Theta, not Airlines, might have stopped the trip. We'll talk about it next to MRA Podcast. Hey guys, what's up? If you're enjoying this show, do us a favor and donate to our Patreon. Word. Just go to www.patreon.com. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com and make a donation to the MRA podcast with Kyle and Kamal. Word. It's that simple. Listen to the show, love the show, share the show, break the show off with some dough. Pars. Kamal, last time I checked, you was about to go on your fifth vacation of the year. I just made the number up. It just came fifth. back from, huh? It might have been fifth. Let me see. Hilarious. Utah. Balling all in. <laughs> Utah, Utah, Palm Springs, Palm Springs. Mexico. Oh, no, not Mexico. Costa Rica. Uh, oh, San Diego. Ah, uh, San Diego, man. I mean, you flossing yeah, all this stuff. It was the fifth. You was accurate. It was the fifth vacation of the year. Yeah. Sorry, man. <laughs> but the Delta oh, cut no, it short. Oh, no, it was like happened. six, man. I went to uh, like a big bear, you know, I was doing the big Yeah, shit, man. man. Oh, this guy, man. This guy got the <laughs> stimmy, man. He out there turning that. Uncle Joe. Hey, man. How, what happened? Huh? Thank you, Uncle Joe. What happened, man? Well, we was uh, we was looking to, to to flee the country again, man. Go on a little mm-hmm. holiday, but uh, that Delta variant, man. It was a yeah. the cases were spiking. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so the whole house is vaccinated except our eight year old because he can't. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. so we didn't want to bring anything back to the guy, man. I think we, yeah. were, we were pretty confident, but, you know, it's, motherfuckers out here living foul, Kyle. You know, yeah, once man. they open things up and they was like, well, it's, it's, you don't have to wear a mask if you're vaccinated. Mm-hmm. Motherfuckers was like, yo, uh, yeah. I'm vaccinated. Yeah. You know, too many I'm cats like, was man, lying. You know, and if you look lying. across the country, yeah, man, it's this big ass spike in. And of course, honor system. Good luck with that. The honor system, man. I don't even yeah, know man. why we have the honor system. Yeah, man. But I guess you can't make everybody get vaccinated. Uh, and you can't, you know, you just can't. So You can't. You, you have can't. to rely on the honor system. And no, you can just rely on just, you know, you just got to keep the mask mandate in, in place until. They don't want that. I know. And see, I that's know. the thing about it. It's like, hey, man, like, if, if I took this vaccine why am i wearing a mask it's, well i'll tell you why you're wearing it's a mask it's gonna create a lot of anger man the mask it mandate. is the other day man i get one of those rapid covid tests man and they got them out now bro i mean this motherfucker was like a pregnancy test dog did a little swab <laughs> I, I, man this is to me this is a game changer man because we can get these in people's homes I think, you know, at least there is just going to be some still some crummy individuals that won't self test. But if you can take a, it didn't even I didn't even jam the nose like they do. You know, it took a self test, took it, man. Within like five minutes, I had the answer. If they can start making that more, you know, normalize those, dude, people will know, man. You ain't got, you know, before you go to the, you know, before you go somewhere to go to the game, just check your shit, man. Just see how you're doing today. And, and, and if I know some people still be crummy. But uh, I think a lot more people will be honest before they go to some, you know, before they go to the grandma's house. Just let me take a quick COVID test right quick before I go to grandma's. You know what I mean? This elderly person. I'm going out with the fellas. I'm not going to take the test, but I'm going to uh, auntie's house. Yeah, let me let me go. Let me test it right quick before I go. That to me is a game changer. But I say all this to say that I took it with, with a friend of mine and mine came back. I was cool, but his came back that he had the COVID and. He'd been vaccinated. So that's what I'm saying about the mask. 
Oh man, hopefully they get these rapid uh, tests for herpes. Because, you know, that's yeah, still my man. thing, Kyle. I mean, I'm yeah, going to I'm 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 keep talking about it till the cows come but home. But the problem is, man, those girls that have that and the dudes that have it, man, they know they got it. So there's no rapid test needed. They know they got it, and, they, they, and they, they should be telling should be partners. The same thing. Oh, you saying that man, people with COVID they, don't know they yeah, got there's, it. Yeah, there's, 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 uh, there's people that just ain't good people, man. They know they got it, and they just like, now you got it. They're just not cool, man. When we come back, man, we have a dear Irby from a guy who's blaming his wife for the rift between he and his kids. Is he right? Or do Kamal and I have to throw the flag? We'll find out next. It's the MRA Podcast. You need some advice in your relationship? And can't afford a therapist? Yeah. Hit us up and we'll get you through this. We won't even charge you a copay. Exactly. The Dear Irby Letter is our longest standing segment on the MRA dating all the way back to the webisodes. This is where we truly save relationships one listener at a time. We've saved marriages. Encouraged divorce. Taught a guy how to please his woman. Encouraged divorce. Yeah. So hit us up for advice and we'll help you out. Send your emails to dearirby at the MRA podcast.com. That is Dear Irby at the MRAPodcast.com. Let's get into this, dear Irby letter. Let us. Dear Irby, I was married for 10 years. My ex wife and I had two great kids, but my wife and I have gone our separate ways. She moved back to her home state of North Carolina, and I stayed in GA where I was born, raised, and met my wife. Since she has been back in NC, I have not seen my kids as much. I still send them money, but I work two jobs and don't have time to travel. She has overscheduled the kids to the point where I offer to send for them to visit. They never have time. Recently, we celebrated Father's Day, as you know, and my kids didn't even reach out. It bothered me because I send them shoes. I pay their tuition. I pay for their phones, but they couldn't even text me on the devices I pay for. I think their mom should have told them to reach out. But maybe I am off on this. What do you and come out think? What's that for? A, a Drummond in West Palm Beach. Which is weird because he said he was in uh, whatever Georgia, but maybe he's West West Palm Beach right now. So what you think? <laughs> it's just they be killing me with that shit. You get your get your fake names together, brothers. Hey, just... drumming man. Typically, I would say like when 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 this is split and you don't see your kids and all that stuff, man. I was mm -hmm. I always look at you and say, mm -hmm. what did you do wrong? What could you do better and all of that. But on this one, man, I'm on your side, dog. Your kids and mm. your ex-wife is tripping, dog. Mm. The phone you pay for, mm. you know, and they're probably on there talking to the kids at, at uh, from the school that you pay the tuition for. Mm -hmm. And they don't even say Happy Father's Day, pops. Now, here's the thing about it, man. The only thing I can, I can assume is ex-wife is poisoning the well. Mm -hmm. You know, because if you are, you said you don't reach out. I mean, you said you don't see them as much as you'd like because you work the two jobs and what. Now, I get it. But are you reaching out on a regular basis on a Tuesday? Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, son, how was school? Hey, daughter, how, how was cheerleading practice? What's going mm -hmm. on with y'all? Hey, what's up, man? Call your pops. Yo, I'm just calling to check in on you, stuff like that. You know, are you reaching out? Are you guys communicating mm. on a regular basis? Now, they got their own phones now, uh, Drummond. So you don't have to go through moms no more. Moms ain't the middle, middle man. Nice. You can reach out straight up and down, you know, without her. And I'm sure you got their numbers because you pay the bill. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you're reaching out on a regular basis, there is a, a, a normal communication between you and your children. And they don't reach out on Father's Day, then yes, they are foul. But if you are just paying the bills, mm -hmm. sending them shoes, the only mm -hmm. communication they have with you mm -hmm. is, you know, checking the mailbox for a package for some J's, and that is mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. I can see why you still think you warrant a Father's Day uh, shout out. Mm hmm. But I can understand if you don't get one. Mm. You're just a benefactor. If that's the mm. case, Drummond. If you you're just the you know, the guy who's you know sending five cents a month, you know fifty cents a month to that kid in Africa. Hilarious. That's what you are. If yep. that's the case, Drummond. But if you're if you have a regular uh if if you have a regular communication, and and and, and your kids. 
have not reached out, I would say, yeah, a uh, wife is poisoning the well. So how can mm-hmm. you overcome the well poisoning uh, of that? I, I would say put your character on full display. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Let let your children know who you are as a person, what type of man you are. Are you a man of your word? Uh, are you a fair man? Are you an honest man? You All of that stuff, man. So mm-hmm. you must increase the communication. You have to be a part of your kids' lives. You have to be a regular, a regular participant mm-hmm. in their lives. You can't be a cameo appearance. You have to be a co-star in their lives. Mm-hmm. All right, you have to be a part of that, and so when it comes to Father's Day, of course they're gonna reach out because they reached out to you the day before Father's Day. Y'all mm-hmm. talk the day before and the day before all that stuff. You know mm-hmm. what's going on and stuff like that in their lives, and so I would say increase the uh, the communication because the well probably is is poison, and mm-hmm. you can't go in there and say, "Hey, your mom is lying about." No, no, no. Don't tell them. Show them. Show them. Mm-hmm. We come back, I'm away. Yo, what's up? I'm Kyle. And I'm Kamal. And you're listening to the MRA Podcast, where men come to talk and women come to eavesdrop. Kamal, you nailed it. I don't need to keep reiterating everything that you said, so I'm going to get, try to get straight to it. Let me tell you what I see here, Drummond. We have a big problem that a lot of men have. We greatly overestimate the value of giving money. I hear men and women say this all the time. I hear women say, look at all these things I do for you and you treat me like that. Yeah, that's not real. Just because you do shit for people, it doesn't mean that they are going to treat you the way you want to be treated because you give them shit. That's (laughs) our that is our childish logic. It's so not real. It's not real. And if you didn't know that now, you know. Um, Shouts out to the ladies who remind their kids to reach out. I am so glad. That my ex does that. That she, you know, no matter what we've been through, she always, 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 always uh, pushes my children to reach out to their father. And they need to be reminded because kids are kids. And so I absolutely appreciate women like that. So shouts out to her and shouts out to those women that are doing that. And if you're not, ladies, maybe you can start. Yeah, start. Um, You, you nailed it, Kamal. Uh, there is no regular basis reach out. This guy and I and I've been and I've been guilty of this before. I thought, you know, the regular basis reach out was cool, but that's not cool. Like a daily maintaining. You know what I mean? Like there's like, you know, there if there when there's a connection. And the problem, my problem is I don't talk to anybody every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't so, like being on the phone. Yeah, that's my problem. I don't yeah. like talking on the phone. Yeah, I don't text anybody every day. I don't talk to anybody every day. Mm-hmm. And if I do, it's not me that's pushing that. And that's what I'm saying. So I might talk to people every day, but I ain't picking up the phone to talk to people every day. They might reach out every day, but I'm just, I'm, I'm the guy that locks into business, work, 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 work. And then when I look up, I'm like, okay, relationship time. Oh, but it's two in the morning. Everybody sleep. Oh shit. Oh, I'm going to bed. So I understand how a guy can get away from that, but it doesn't matter. You need a regular relationship with your children because I promise if had you been, if y'all talked on Monday, Tuesday, and then Friday, they would have probably more likely remembered on that Sunday, but there's a good chance they may not have, but I doubt you have that. So that should be what you're striving for. Kamel, you named, nailed it on the head and ain't no, ain't nothing else for me to say. Where can we find you? Twitter, Instagram, and Clubhouse at Angry Kamel. That's right. I am at Kyler B K Y L E E R B Y at the MRA Podcast, where you can find us both on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. KylerB.com is my website. You can see some of my commercials, man. I am I'm happy that the fast food joint and the insurance joints run at the same time. Kamel, some my mom said she saw it in the same commercial break. That feels amazing, man. Wow. The MRA Pod, yeah, man. The the MRA podcast.com is where you can listen to all 156 episodes we have done. And if you do the math, 52 weeks in a year times three is 156. That means today is th- our three year anniversary show. Woo! Come out. What do we get for three years? Is that wood or what? Is that- I, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think you got to give wood. You got to go give the wood to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> so you go give the wood, man, and I'll, you know, and I'll do my part, man. I'll yeah, figure something I'll, out. I'll, I'll celebrate. I'll celebrate that anniversary. Yeah, man. With with uh, just just last longer than Bezos did, though, man. Just make sure you last longer. Than Bezos. 
<laughs> Check us out on Dynasty Radio NY.com, 1073VIP.com, our affiliates in New York and Illinois, respectively. Come out, man. Thank you for three years of preparation and hilarity, bro. I appreciate you, man. Oh, no problem, bro. Hey, man. Ladies, we love you. Fellas, be a man at all times. Deuces. MRA. <laughs>